was watching this special, and it was about heart transplants. What it is is that it was saying that when people were having transplants, they were all of a sudden having these new memories um, that come up in their everyday life or in their dreams. They go back to the doctor, some of them, and they found out how that person died who donated the heart. And let's say they had a dream about a motorcycle accident. That's how the person died. It was a motorcycle accident. There was all these other correlations between how the heart also carries memories and not just the brain. I think that when we evolve, perhaps our biological makeup, it'll be more in touch with the collective memory of the universe and not merely like the world of today. The psychics of today, they say, I can feel the people still here in these temples. Well, I'm saying potentially we can feel the collective memory of the universe and not just this planet. During the day and night cycles of the, the Mayan calendar, the sacred long count calendar, positivity and negativity were sort of alternating in a zigzag fashion according to what the Maya considered were times of importance and times of more importance. It's 13 Bach tunes long, there's 12 notes in music, plus silence maybe, and it began a couple hundred years before the time of the Pyramid of Giza and Stonehenge, but it was after the supposed Sumerians, which evolved into Egypt anyway, I hear. In the very center, you'll notice that there are no nights. It's pure resonance, all days. Pure resonance from the galactic core. The Bach tune of the mind teachings is extremely appropriate. During this time, you had the Greeks, Pythagoras, Lao Tzu, Taoism, uh, the Buddha, Plato, Aristotle, and Zarathustra. Hopefully, you also notice that when made thinner and taller, it looks like a circle with coils on its sides. DNA? The sun and DNA? What I've, what I've come to believe, like Arguelles, is that our star system is assisting us with our physiological progression. There are not only flares of temperature in the sun, there are flares of insight and communication. Initially, if we were a planet without a sun, then psychic activity between other worlds or systems might not be as easy. Because without that energy, it's harder to find the specific systems in which you're trying to communicate. And going back to the code that uh, the aliens uh, responded to, to Carl Sagan supposedly, our mode of communication on the bottom of the code was a telescope. Like, that's how we communicate to the stars. What was theirs? The stars themselves. The very bottom represented their form of communication, which is psychic telepathy through each star system. And the weird thing about the crop circle is that it looks exactly like the, the sun sign in astrology, a circle with a dot in the very center, and then all the star systems are just connected through that beam of energy that Arguelles talks about, which will be complete on the winter solstice of 2012. I mean, I'm surprised there hasn't been like a crop circle that gives us a mushroom or some molecular formation that gives us a hint of some chemical that immediately allows psychic activity, like DMT for instance. When I was watching this uh, UFO special about Area 51, they said they did find a piece of the spaceship. And that the weird thing is that it's no known chemical on Earth. They think it's from some sort of meteorite uh, formation. What's interesting about it is that when you dip it into, say, dry ice, it gets as cold as the ice, yet it's indestructible. And when you dip it in lava, like, however hot you put it, that's how hot it is as well. And it's still indestructible. So it makes sense that if these spaceships were going at such intense speeds, uh, our excuse is always, well, metal melts at that speed. It's not metal, it's meteorite. Still starts with M-E-T. By the way, did you see that first picture ever of a molecule? I mean, it's kind of crazy for my beliefs, because it's like they say you can't see single atoms without knowing where it's going, and you can't know where it's going without losing where it is. I mean, that's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Like, matter is uncertain, that's why I'm so drawn to quantum physics. But for this picture to record the connection between those unseen atoms is very interesting. It's exactly what physicists have been saying. It's like literally hexagons of uh, formation. Anyway, so apparently all parts of the body, I believe, have potential to carry memory and information. Like, for instance, this one person had no experience of a motorcycle accident, but after the heart transplant, uh, they were having dreams of how that person died who happened to loan them the heart. So what this ultimately leads one to think is that the soul is affected by its body's manifestation. So the body is the soul, the body is what's expressing 
the soul within the cells. I mean, it's what Buddhists have been saying since the Bhaktun of the mind teachings. And what this also infers is that whether or not we experience something in this body doesn't mean someone can't recollect it when only touching another person. Not necessarily like a whole transplant. Edgar Cayce had this gift. I mean, what is it in the energy of Pisces that allows so much affectation and potential to tap into the source? What part of their flesh is superior because the season in which they were brewed? It's definitely not the brain which is superior. Our zodiacal placements are our whole bodies. And when Nietzsche said, perhaps the evolution of our consciousness is really the evolution of the body, we will rejoice in knowing the word of Quetzalcoatl has given us our hope. Amen Ra.